Earlier I said how horrified I was when I heard somebody claiming that they could teach someone to be a coach, thanks very much, in 16 hours. And then I said, well, actually, that's stupid because I can teach someone to be a coach in five minutes. And, and this is how I do it. And the little one <coughs> is for you to keep and put in your wallet or whatever you carry your money in so it's always with you. Uh, I believe that if you use what is on these cards... If you only use these questions, it is actually sufficient for you to become a lifetime proficient coach. One of my concerns about coaches is that they keep all their baggage. And I think coaches and therapists and such like should really work on themselves first. And if you use this question, it solves the problem. And it is, what would be the most useful question for me to ask you now? So we're honouring the client by saying that they know what the next question is. And we'll see from experience when you practice, but actually they always do. Now, if they say they don't, then you just ask the next question. Well, what would it be if you did know? And if you've got the right, you know, depending on the energy and so on, you could say, well, try a guess. But there is, and I used to be classic like this. People ask me any question, I always answer, I don't know. And it was a sort of, I think it was possibly a, a, a defence mechanism and possibly also a claim for some time. Because if they asked me again, I would know. But I would always say I don't know. So actually, we need to break through some sort of psychological barrier. And the subconscious will know the answer, even if the conscious one is, re is resisting. So when they say they don't know, say, well, what would it be if you did know? There are some questions on the back which are to do more with the sort of quality of how the coaching is going. So sometimes we will be working on a theme which seems to be going off track. It seems to be going off track to me, the coach, and it might be going off track or it might not. So we ask this question when they, when they come up with an answer, how does that relate to your stated outcome? In other words, we've agreed what we're trying to achieve and I can't see the link. And it may be they say, well, actually, this is why. And then we've made some progress. Or it may be they say, yeah, actually, I think we're going off a bit and we need to focus better. Okay. Now, we've talked about challenge and stretching. And challenge sounds almost, could almost be a little bit aggressive. But it doesn't need to be. So if somebody gives you a good answer and you think, actually, we need to push them a bit here. We just say, okay, I accept that, but what would be even better? And you can actually get on and think, okay, and what would be better than that? And what would be better than that? And what would be better than that? So accepting their answer, but asking them to stretch themselves. A lot of people are very good at knowing what they don't want. So sometimes we'll say, people will say, well, actually, I don't want to work in London. So the answer, the question there is, is, well, what do you want instead? And if you mentioned, saw one of our presuppositions, is choice is better than no choice. And if we, th if we know what we don't want, we're stuck. As soon as we say, well, actually, what do you want instead? We're presupposing there are some alternatives. And then finally, Let's assume that we've sorted out this, we, we, particularly we've got the awareness, we know exactly where we are. Now, there's two possibilities. Is one, we've been like this for some time and we haven't achieved what we want. So the question there would be, what has stopped you? Uh, the other question is, we've got this all sorted out and there's something, some reason we want then to move into action and then we say, what stops you? And I found actually this is a, a really powerful question because very often people have a problem. I don't know what the problem is, but we ask them sim simply, what stops you? And sometimes it's a silly little thing. It may be in an organisation, I need permission from someone. When I should have been just knocking on someone's door and asking. It may be what stops you? Well, actually, I haven't got certain resources. Well, let's forget about what you're trying to achieve and now go and work on getting the resources. So on this one card, and the version of it you can put in your pocket. I believe there is a complete coaching course. Okay, now, just one thing. The role of the coach is to ask the questions and be curious and not to come up with solutions. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And That's I know it's very useful to get the example from Shekhar because it's the biggest temptation for many people is to come up with solutions. Mm -hmm.
and there are a few occasions when it's appropriate and you have to judge when it is and then you have to say would it be appropriate for me now to make a suggestion or would it be appropriate for me now to just tell you something about my experience or about one of my colleagues experience or something but be very wary with it because the process is what wins and it's the client that needs to solve it. I was able really uh, to do it all using these questions mm. and I think we did make some progress. Yeah, did we, we did. Yeah. Um, it, it, it felt a bit, uh, what's the right word? Contrived is probably not the right word, but the fact that you, I knew what question you were going to, oh no, he's going to ask me that again, what am I going <laughs> to, yeah. you know. But I mean, well actually, I mean, the, but it did move it along. Yes, um, yes. So yeah, I can see why that's yeah. perfectly valid. And it was a way of challenging Absolutely. without being aggressive. Definitely. And uh, keeping you on the spot. Definitely. With, I hope without being aggressive. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. I was using your words anyway. But I, I, I am disinterested, not uninterested. Mm. I don't care what the answer is. Mm. But what I did care was that was an answer. Mm. And the danger is that there'll be 25 non-answers because you naturally keep coming up with lists and so on. <laughs> so, so was that a bit, a bit like pulling the horse back to the road in a way? Yes, what you absolutely, doing? absolutely. I think that model uh, of Milton Erickson's is mm. perfect. It's that you know, but I don't. Mm -hmm. But I have a process, mm -hmm. and I will discipline you, and I will mm -hmm. keep you on the track. But I don't actually really know, and t I care, but I am disinterested. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, would you like to get yourselves into pairs? No, it was just incredible. It took a while for it to click. I really stumbled over how easy it was. I thought, no, 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 no. But finally, I think mainly because of your patience and flattery, which you know, works. <laughs> um, we, we got it, and we just kept going back to the question and drilling down and drilling down. Um, so enormously helpful. It, I think, is a testament to how, how much we complicate things, showing how great the difficulty is with something that's so simple. Yeah, I, I actually found that quite... Uh a powerful exercise because I have actually been coaching for a while but to come back to this simplicity mm -hmm. the danger wasn't in the questions the danger was in my judgment of the answers coming out as to whether or not they were on you know on track with what they needed to do as long as I kept myself out of the way and kept on coming back to the simple questions mm -hmm. the process continued it's only when I interpreted the answer that I got into trouble yes. on there. So uh, when I was working uh, with uh, uh, my partner, she commented that she felt that uh, uh, perhaps I was going around in loops internally. That's not a, what I felt because every, every time she came back to the primary question, I got back on track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was going deeper and deeper. So we were actually going somewhere, although it may not have looked like that on the outside. And so, from a coaching perspective, this is a lesson in the coach getting out of the way. Yes. On yes. There and complicating things because yes. actually it is very simple. The question, and if the coach sticks to these questions and asks you the question, it can give you so much clarity. Yes. I mean, just sticking to them and thinking about them can bring about a lot of clarity. That's what I noticed. So, I have to thank Sanjay for that. He did a very good job there. I noticed how, when I stopped putting my own perspective onto it, how much progress we made. Good. Because I, I find that I empathise sometimes by saying, um, yes, I know how that feels, or I would do that, and that's complete, it tends to sort of stifle it's, it. It's banned. You're not allowed to add fluff. And if they fluff, you keep asking questions till they drop the fluff. Mm. But actually, if the question is clean, and if it's given with the port, you don't need any sort of fluff. Um, for myself, it was actually quite revelatory regarding the particular question that I <laughs> um, that um, I answered with regards to myself. But the, what you said about um, the danger of not just letting the process just you know spiral out of control, mm -hmm. yeah, you've got to make sure. And you've but then the other thing for me is that I like to feel that okay, going through the process. Once the clients walked away, have they understood and realised that they've actually answered their own question? That's the part that I feel you've got to... I'd like to be able to feel that, yes, did you just understand that you've now answered your own question? 
Or are they going to walk away 15 minutes later and think, well, that, oh, that was great, but back to whatever I was doing before. Well, one of the frustrations of coaching, and also, I think, good therapy and so on, what I, I think we give an example some of it, what I say, that what's the difference between training and coaching? If you've been on a training course, you know what you've been taught. <coughs> if you've been coached, you might not be able to remember what the problem was. And so sometimes it's frustrating because the coach can achieve great uh, progress with the client and the client doesn't recognize it because the problems have gone away and you get no credit for it, but then we're not in the business of getting credit. And I think it's in, in, in the workbook, but it's Lao Tse talking about leadership. Uh, and he says, and at the end of the day, they thought they did it all themselves. And that's invisible leadership. I liked using the questions um, from both perspectives, both being the coach and the coachee. And particularly the first question really focuses, because they're coming up with the question, not you, on what it is that's perhaps bothering them at the time that they want to actually explore further. So I think that was particularly powerful. Um, the other question for us that was particularly powerful was that last one, what stops you? Yes. And exactly what happened was, that's an interesting question, or that's an interesting point. And it almost felt like it was a reality check. And the reality check was, well, actually, there's nothing stopping me. So what am I messing around with? So I think it had a lot of uh, impact in that respect. And then the other thing that particularly happened in ours, and I think it relates to the question of what would be even better, um, when, when we were having our conversation, what actually happened is, no, I don't want to go anywhere else. I actually want to stick with this now. And that was very good because it meant that the coachee was keeping the conversation where they wanted to be and not allowing the coach to take the questions sort of in a different direction.